What is going on guys? We're back here with another episode of Unreal Outdoors and today's episode is, it's kind of different. We're not at the lake, we're in the kitchen. Some of that we're not normally on. The reason for that is today, we're gonna go over some of the best recipes that I like to do to cook striped bass in particular. Now I know what you're gonna say, don't keep stripers. Here's the thing, these are late landlocked stripers in a freshwater lake, so they're not the big ocean water ones and they are ones that are starving. Their lake has an ecosystem that turns over every three years. What that means is that it goes on a three year cycle where one year the bait fish, namely shad, are very, very abundant and the stripers are not really there or running. They're feeding less aggressive and it's more of a small enough fish rate at those times. And then you'll get a year in the middle where it's kind of an equal balance. You know, the bait fish there and the striped bass are there and they're pretty bonding. Fishing's decent, all this kind of stuff. Then you'll get years like this past year which is where there are no shad, the stripers are starving and they will eat anything. So our local game and fish encourages us to go and take out as many stripers as we can so the meat and the bodies do not go to waste. So that is what we are doing today. We are cooking up some of that harvest. So it is done in a very, very conservative way. So just keep that in mind guys. But this re recipe is phenomenal. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. Super easy things that you need for this recipe. Starting off is our fish batter. This is a Zatarain's fish fry, crispy southern. That's the package. This stuff is phenomenal. Probably one of my favorite things to fry fish in. Then from the same company, Zatarain's, we've got their blackened seasoning. This is if you want to spice your fish up a little bit. You really might not need it. You might just need the fish fry. That still has flavor and spices. This is if you want to get a little bit extra and add a little bit of spice. Then we have some buttermilk. This is basically to keep your batter on tighter and get a better coating so you get that crisper sort of bite. Then we have our amazing Batter Pro. This is for basically sticking the fish around and getting all of this goodness attached to the fish. And then of course you need your striped bass meat. It's a super white, super flaky meat and it is an absolute delectable delight. Oh yeah, that's, that's how we say it. And so Obviously the fish here have already been flayed and already been cut into chunks. We'll go through the cutting process to cut them into a little bit more bite-sized things and a lot of the deep cleaning right now. So we got our cutting board here, our fillet knife, and these. So this is a little bit of a skinnier strip. I'm simply just going to cut this into sizes about like that. This is going to be a little more flakier, a little more crunchier sort of a piece. Then we have fatter pieces like this. If it's too fat, you can cut it down the middle and make it skinnier. Uh, uh, cut it down the middle like that right there. I personally don't care, but really you just want to get it in that sort of smaller than a chicken nugget or a small chicken tender sort of size. So like even that right there, that could be a good size right there, just a little bit bigger of a piece for someone to chew on. That's already a good in place size here. We can just dump the entire bag right here. Oh yes, look at all the delectable fish juices and uh, water. So the way I store my fish in the freezers, guys, as you can tell, this is labeled. And uh, I basically just put my fish in here after I clean them and put water around them and then I freeze it. And that sort of ice just acts as like a natural barrier to bacteria and stuff. So just keep cutting this, you know, in a very professional looking way. I think it could now be known as, you know, other than just a fisherman, we should call me like Jeff Jean, you know? Be like a little French guy. If you speak France and that offended you, or speak French, I deeply apologize. Chef Jean at work though. So we'll just get all these things cut up and then after you get them all cut up into your right sizes, like I said, you can cut it in half like this if it's a little bit too thick for you, but really just get rid of those bite chunks and then stuff like that, that white silver, that silver skin, you don't want that in there. It'll give you a nasty fish taste. So you can just cut that out and then dispose of it. And so we'll get all this cut up guys and then we'll show you in the Batter Pro. Now we get on to the Batter Pro step. This is truly one of the most helpful tools, you wanna to call it a tool, that you could use while making fish, especially if you're deep frying, which is what we're doing today. And so basically, this end has a little bit of a cup, a little bit of a downward sloop in there. This is a pump on it, it goes up like that. You wanna make sure that you are laying your fish into the part that has the downward bend in it. So we're gonna put that bend right there. And then the opposite bend, that you, you know, the opposite one, this part, you're gonna put your fish fry, your batter in there. So we're gonna take this guy out. That looks just delicious. It will be even better when it's on flesh, which now that I said that out loud doesn't sound that charming. Anyway, so we're just gonna pour it all in and you just wanna cover the base of it with a little bit extra. So you'll cover the base, boom, 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 boom. And you can add more batter if you, you know, end up frying a little bit more uh, and then just kind of Swing so around, we got a good cover of the base there. Then you're gonna take your fish and for your next step, this is where the buttermilk's gonna come in. So like I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be your coating sort of mixture. Oh yes, buttermilk smells phenomenal. And so 
This is your coating mixture. You're gonna dump it in a bowl, very, very easy. You're just gonna throw your fish in there. You're gonna let them soak in that buttermilk, rum it around, and all this is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that when you fish, the, put these fish chunks in your batter, the batter is gonna stick to it 10 times more, and you're gonna get a much more crunchy and just more taste of that batter instead of it just being all the fish. It gets a better coating, if you would. I'm gonna pop some chunks in there. Mix it around, you get your fingers smelling the delectable smell of buttermilk. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that just absolute gourmetness? Remember, you really just gotta just mix it in there. Just really, really get your fingers in there. Mix it in. Welcome back to my ASMR. Just kidding, we're cooking bass. Uh -huh. Get it in the batter. Get it in the batter. Batter up. Boom. Then, of course, oh, he's done. The fryer has been heated up. He's calls for us. Then simply go wash your hands and shake up the batter pro. While you still have that front layer of gooey goodness of that buttermilk on top of your fish, you can take your blackening seasoning if you want to go for the little bit of a spice up option and just sprinkle it over. Very easy. You don't want to put too much. This stuff is, um, I say strong. Some people might argue with me about my weakness to spice, but it definitely has a kick. Then you're going to flip it on and this is the best part. This is how you get everything put together. Flip it around, give it a shake. Play the Batter Pro drum. And then comes out all connected like that. Then we'll travel yonder bog. And then we have here our Sakura. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it's our deep fryer. Take this lid off and you have your basket. All you're gonna do, you're just gonna plop these guys into your basket. Make sure you wash your fingers here. This stuff is very, very hot. And I do not want anyone getting burned while watching my videos. Pop those bad boys down. And this is really where the amount of crispiness and true chemistry of cooking the fish comes out. It depends on how long you want to keep it in there. As you can see in here, you have some that are already floating on the surface. Those are going to be those thinner pieces. They're already pretty much cooked through. They're back up on the surface. I'm going to leave it in a little bit longer though because I like mine to be a little bit more crisp. But as soon as you start seeing all those pieces floating on the surface is really when you're ready to go. So these little white balls up on the surface, once you see them coming up to the surface like that, you're pretty much good to go whenever. You can check it out and check it if you want. I'm gonna leave it in there because like I said, I wanna get that really dark brown and that crispness to it. So guys, they've been in through their first batch. They just got a little bit of crisp on them. This is the little trick of the trade sort of secret. I'm actually gonna put them back into the batter and that oil is just gonna help them get one extra little bit of crispness to it. So I'm gonna go grab the batter pro and then with that batch that I just took out and I'm gonna put it in here for its second coat of batter. And get it all ready to hopefully get the ultimate crispness. Part two of the ASMR channel. Oh yeah. Listen to how it really sizzles in the pan there. Oh yeah. And then just watch this. Oi, whoa! <laughs> Zooey mama. That's the sound that you want to hear. Yes, sir. After I let that second batch sit in there and really just poke on, you can get it out. Look at those. That is what I call crispy. Then you're gonna come over here and dump it to your plate. And I'm not gonna lie, guys. My first batch, uh, as you can see here, kind of exploded. I don't really know what it is, but uh, you know, come over here to this one. We're kind of calling them like fish crumbs and stuff, but uh, Mm, mm, mm. Fish crumbs are bussin'. That's good. That is good. I feel weird for saying bussin', but that is good. Mm -hmm. Tell you guys, you want to impress someone on a first date, make them some fish crumbs. I don't know how we did it, but we did. And in the end, guys, you should be left with a delectable little bass nut. No, not bass nugget. That does not. <laughs> Sound delectable. This piece of fried meat. It's good. Really, really good. 
Guys, I absolutely love this recipe. As you can see on the inside there, like I said, it is a flaky, super white and super tender meat. And it tastes phenomenal. To add a little bit of spice to the video, we're also, we're gonna try something different here. Um, deep fried banana, peanut butter, banana. Deep fried peanut butter banana for that information. And of course, we're doing it with none other than Skip. Come on, Skippy. Skippy, best brand out there. Ignore the peanut covered hand. But the banana fell and I had to catch it. Boom, into the batter it goes. I'm gonna rinse my hands off. This is a sin. I am being going to be eternally damned for this one. <laughs> this is disgusting. Oh my gosh. There. I don't know what this is gonna do. Here we go. Okay. We'll get back to you if there's a short recess. Okay. I think that looks good. I mean, I don't think it looks good, but like, I think it's done. Onto the pile of stuff you go. Wait, we'll cool off, and then we'll get to eating. Okay. Oh no, it's, oh no, it's gooey, no. No, deep fried things aren't supposed to be bendable. Oh, that is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna eat this. Okay, okay. Number one learned lesson, do not deep fry bananas. That was terrible. As always guys, thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Go check out Follow the Action and their apparel. I'll be putting their link and some coupon codes down in the description. Perfect gift to get someone for this Christmas or holiday season. Guys, I love you. Happy fishing y'all. Do not forget to subscribe.